In the 18th century came the Industrial Revolution. It brought social and economic changes that marked the transition from a stable agricultural and commercial society to a modern industrial society. Historically, it refers to the period in British history from 1750 to 1850. Dramatic changes in the social and the economic structure took place as inventions and new technology created the factory system of large scale machine production and greater economic specialization. The population which was employed in agriculture now gathered in urban factories. Do you know why this happened? Well, earlier the merchants would supply the family with raw materials, that is take them raw materials to the homes of the workers. And after the work was completed, they would collect the finished products. This system did not meet the growing demands of the markets for long. So, by the end of the 18th century, rich merchants set up factories. They installed new machines, brought raw materials and employed workers on fixed wages to make machine made goods. Thus, the factory system was born. The Industrial Revolution started in Britain with the use of steam power. This was made possible with the invention of the steam engine by James Watt in 1769. John Case invented the flying shuttle which simplified the process of weaving cloth and which increased the output four times. James Hargreaves invented a hand powered spinning wheel, the spinning jenny to create multiple spools of thread at once. After the invention of the spinning jenny, cotton textiles became the key industry of this period. The presence of large quantities of coal and iron proved a decisive factor in Britain's rapid industrial development. The building of canals and roads, as well as the advent of the railroad and steamship, widened the market for manufactured goods. New periods of development came with electricity and the gasoline engine. Britain had all the resources that were needed to make her an industrial power. By 1850, the revolution had been accomplished with industries becoming a dominant factor in British life. The effect of the industrial revolution was felt worldwide. France after 1830, Germany after 1850 and the United States after the Civil War soon started industrialization. Now, we should actually get to know how this industrialization was achieved. Major inventions and reforms gave a boost to agriculture in England. Important innovations took place in farming such as Jethro Tull's seed planting drill, which aided in planting seeds at a uniform interval and depth without any wastage. Between 1760 to 1830, the British Parliament passed nearly 1,000 enclosure acts by which the lands which had earlier belonged to the community were combined into larger areas. Though all this helped to increase agricultural production, but at the same time rendered a large number of people landless. Now, only a few people were needed to work on the farms, so a large number of people started migrating to cities for employment. This provided cheap and abundant labor to work in the factories. The favorable political conditions in England further helped in the growth of the Industrial Revolution. Acts like the removal of trade barriers and a common market aided the merchants. England was able to capture the overseas markets primarily with the development in transportation. Many European countries had by now started following the policy of mercantilism. Under this policy, government control was exercised over industries and trade. It was based on the theory that national strength was indicated by more exports and less imports. This theory also believed that wealth of a nation depends on the possession of gold and silver and the government interference in trade should be very limited. What factors do you 
think made it possible for England to be the first country to be industrialized. England enjoyed a geographical advantage over other countries. It had a secured island location with an easy proximity to sea. But at the same time, it was isolated from the rest of Europe and hence progressed unhindered. Waterways like canals, rivers and sea helped England to have the largest free trade area without tolls or barriers. These advantages made England a favorable location for the industrial revolution. Now let us see how innovations and technological changes during the industrial revolution were bringing about changes in the world. Many innovations, inventions and technological changes took place during this period. It helped to make the industrialized countries more powerful and efficient. New productions could be done much faster and in larger quantities which made things cheaper. These inventions had maximum impact on the textile and transport industries which you are going to learn now. Let us take the textile industry. Technological advancements in the textile industry started a series of inventions in iron and steel production. Other countries were inspired to follow the example of England as manufactured goods from England were flooding the world markets. To safeguard their interest, Britain passed laws to ban textile workers from leaking out information about industrial technology or to travel to other countries. But in 1789, Samuel Slater slipped out of England to America. He took the knowledge of British textile industry with him, which initiated industrial revolution in America. Vast new areas are brought under cotton plantations in America, which increased the demand for slaves. Similar incidents started industrial revolution in France and Germany also. Do you know that Arkwright was called the father of the factory system? He created the first factory that was specially built to house machinery, where the working hours were fixed and the people were employed rather than kept on contractual basis. In 1779, Samuel Crompton invented the spinning mule, while Edmund Cartwright made the first water-driven powered loom. The textile industry stimulated other industries such as dyeing, bleaching and printing. Now, let me give you an activity to perform. Try to visit a handloom center or a family of weavers near your neighborhood. Find out about the kind of work they do, whether there is division of labor between the men and the women. What kind of technology do they use? What are the problems they are facing? Do they employ children or do their children help them in their work? Write a report on your findings. The innovations and technological changes which led to advancement in manufacturing, transport and communication industries followed closely with chemical, electrical, petroleum and steel industries. The discovery of trade routes not only gave a boost to industrial revolution but also led to competition among colonial and imperialist powers for expanding their empires to fulfill the need of industries for raw materials, new markets and cheap labor. The imperialist expansion led to struggle for supremacy and the two world wars. The colonies were exploited, the traditional social, economic and political systems were destroyed. They started opposing the foreign rule and to establish their own nations. Now comes the steam engine, which is another major advancement of the industrial revolution in the field of science. This was known as the development and application of steam power. Even the earlier devices were improved upon and developed into machines as the number of industries had increased. So enormous power was needed for production. In 1705, Thomas Newcomen built an engine for pumping water from coal mines. In 1764, James Watt improved upon the design and improved the efficiency of Newcomen's engine fourfold. He introduced a chamber with a jet of cold water to condense the steam and cause a vacuum. This was also a period of transfer of one technology to another. Watt used John Wilkinson's drill gun to bore the large cylinder for his engine. 
The steam engine soon replaced the earlier locomotive coal engines. It increased the demand for railway lines. The steam engine made the technology portable and was in demand by other industries. Now there was no need to locate the factories along rivers or lakes any longer. Then advancements in coal and iron. The steam engine, coal and iron laid the foundation for modern industry. It was believed that only people with a death wish worked in mines. Coal was moved along horizontal tunnels in baskets and then hold up a vertical shaft to the surface. The movement of coal from mines was totally dependent on muscle power. Animals, men, women and children. The coal mines had dangerous working conditions. Unfortunately, the children were preferred because of their small size. The demand for coal went up with the increase in the use of steam power. Great progress was made in coal mining, such as tunnel ventilation, transportation of coal, use of gunpowder to blast away ridges, and the use of safety lamps. But the coal miners suffered from many hazards and health problems, like lung disease. Significant improvements were also made in the iron industry during this time. In 1709, Abraham Darby produced pig iron smelted with coke. Earlier, pig iron was smelted with charcoal, which was derived from wood, which resulted in fast depletion of England's forest. In 1784, Henry Cote, an iron master, developed a process for producing a less brittle iron. It was called wrought iron. It proved to be a very useful metal in industrial processes. In 1774, John Wilkinson invented a drilling machine that could drill holes with great accuracy. Between 1788 and 1806, the production of iron increased many times and the use of iron spread to farm machinery, hardware, shipbuilding, etc. The development in the iron and textile industry made it necessary to invent better transportation facilities for cheaper and quicker movement of goods. It was urgently required to fulfill the need of domestic and foreign markets. Now, I shall discuss about transportation and communication. The improvement in the means of transport and communication was a great encouragement in the Industrial Revolution. The raw materials, finished products, food and people needed a reliable system of transportation. Improvement in bridges and road construction were made early in the 1700s. They helped to transport the raw materials and factory-made products to their destinations. In 1814, George Stephenson built the first steam locomotive engine to run on railway tracks. Soon, the steam engines and railways were transporting goods over tracks throughout England and supporting the canal transportation. Do you know that the first railway line to use locomotive traction and carry passengers as well as freight was between Stockton to Darlington in the year 1825. During the mid-19th century, wooden steam-powered ships took over sailing ships. Soon after, iron ship was used for traveling across the ocean. If the first phase of industrial revolution depended on steam, then the second phase depended on electricity. Do you know Michael Faraday had the distinction of inventing the first electric motor? Electricity now became commercially available and was used to run the factories. Faster means of transportation and communication, speeding up business transaction, contacts between army units, colonies, countries, and even common people. The invention of telegraph and telephone made it possible to communicate anywhere in the world instantly. Now let us see what was the impact of the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution also encouraged the movement of the masses towards cities, which gave birth to an urban society. The workers now lived close to the workshops or the factories where they were provided employment opportunities. But the working conditions and the factories were miserable, along with poor housing, hygiene, and health conditions. The factory owners had only one motive, and that was to make profit. Hence, he forced the workers to work for long hours on low wages, sometimes 12 to 14 hours daily. Women and children were paid very low wages. 
the factories were poorly ventilated, noisy, dirty, damp and dark. Do you think the situation continued for long? Gradually, the workers began to realize their strength. The pressure came from trade unions. A movement began to save the workers from the injustices of the factory system. Many laws were made to reform the working and living conditions. Activities are an important part of your syllabus and which you must take very seriously. So again, I am going to give you an activity to do. Look around you, in your family or neighborhood or shop or market. Do you see young children below 14 years being employed and denied the right to study? What should be done to educate them? Give it a thought and try to find ways to help them. Do you know there was a tremendous increase in production which resulted in lower cost of goods? Human labor was replaced with the machines and the domestic system of production came to an end. Increase in agricultural production decreased the food prices. A new source of wealth rose from the ownership of factories and machinery. This new group of people were known as the capitalists. They also organized the banking system to distribute capital from surplus income areas to those areas where it was needed. In early 1700s, the first private banks were opened by goldsmiths, merchants and manufacturers. Very soon, industrial revolution spread to other countries. The discovery of trade routes encouraged competition amongst colonial and imperialist powers for expanding their empires to fulfill the need of raw materials, new markets and cheap labor. It started a race for colonies among the European countries, primarily between England and France. Later on, Italy, Germany and other countries also joined the race. These imperialist countries led to a struggle for supremacy and of course the two world wars. They exploited the colonies and destroyed the traditional socio-economic and political systems. These colonies in turn started opposing the foreign rulers and fighting for their independence. Now I'm going to ask you some questions. Be prepared with the answers. Which two natural resources played an important role in the birth of industrial revolution in England? How did the development in the means of transport and communication assist the merchants. What do you think were the reasons to employ children in coal mines and factories? Try and find the answers. If you do, move further. If you can't, go back once again. Now this brings me to an end to this particular discussion. Thank you.